No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today, I'm back in here with an old friend. Yellow Beezy is in the building. Yo, yo. How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. Very nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too, my guy. Yeah, we were just uh, taking a look. The last time we did an interview was February 2019. So that's almost four years ago, but it still feels like it wasn't that long ago. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. How you been? What's going on in life? Man, just, you know, putting out this music. Right. That's it. I was listening to the tape this morning in the gym. Fucking with it. Yeah, it was dope. Appreciate Holding it down. It. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So uh, how has life been since we did that interview the last three, four years? How would you characterize it in terms of your <clears throat> your rise and everything? Uh, Man, a little here, a little there. Yeah. That's it. You know, for the most part, on the up and up, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you still going to have your obstacles and shit like that. So right. I can't complain I'm here. Right, definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I, cause I seen you in Dallas. Okay. Juice World had that big ass concert. Right. And you were in there. Uh huh. That was that was what twenty. Must have been twenty nineteen because before 2019? the pandemic. Yeah, right before the pandemic for sure. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So you still you still calling Dallas home? Yeah, but you know, gotta move and grow though. You got a couple locations at this point. Exactly. Got to got to keep that. Right. Yeah. How would you describe the overall uh, tone in the city these days? Mm, in the city. I mean, it's cool, you know. It's gonna. I put a, you know, like when you from somewhere, you gonna have all type of mixed shit going on. So it's like, right, it's up and down. But there's definitely been a few times over the last couple of years where we, as a country, have mm-hmm. kind of looked at Texas and been like, holy shit. Not and not even just talking about like mass shootings and shit, because obviously right. there's been a bit of that. Right. But just in terms of like rappers going to texas and shit not going so well for them all kinds of crazy shit going on i mean like like in la and new york we have all kind of are in agreement that shit is fucked up right now yeah it's crazy outside for sure sure. yeah yeah texas i don't know texas just just wild wild west bro like i don't know you know it's just it's always gonna be some shit going on out there i don't give a fuck where it's at just I don't know. I don't know. It might just be something in the water or something. Right. Yeah. You think everybody being able to legally carry makes it, like, less chaotic? Hey, you know what? They just, I just looked up some. it was like, well, I didn't look it up. They just posted about it the other day, I guess, because, you know, they had made it to where, like, motherfuckers 18 and up can get, get handguns and shit. So, right. all, the, like, all the youngsters, like, coming with the motherfuckers, like, on their hip. Right. Open the carrier with a third round clip on that shit. So you, you know can be saying? walking around the mall with a gun on your hip. Not, I don't think in the mall. Right, because they have separate rules. Yeah, it's yeah. like separate rules when it comes to shit like that. But like on the street, then yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, but I think like it got too out of control, and mm. that shit would just happen. This, I think they passed that law like last year in September. They already trying to shut that. They, I think they shut it down. Already. Really? Yeah, they trying to shut that. Like make it to where they 21 and up. Cause I was just in Nashville, and like half the spots that I was going to in terms of restaurants and mm-hmm. stuff, they would just have a big old sign outside, like "No firearms allowed in here," even though you are legally allowed to carry in right. that state, you right. know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. It, it's like Texas Day. Them young niggas is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't buy uh tobacco till you're 21, but you can carry a gun. Ain't that some shit? Ain't right. Okay. So I would assume me and you are on the same page, and that we think that responsible adults in the United States of America should be able to carry firearms. But when you see something like that, being able to go and get a gun, 18, barely any background checks or anything, does that seem like something that that's the kind of thing the law should be addressing? Yeah. I mean, you know, not trying, you know, I feel like everybody should be able to protect themselves. But then when you just got some young, wild, nut motherfuckers, bro, it's just like it's going to bring more havoc to whatever situation is at the point. You know what I'm saying? It's like... A lot of motherfuckers ain't 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 grew up at that time, you know. Right. So they mind ain't thinking, you know what I'm saying. Then they listen to all the rap music, so that's why the crime already going up. So I feel like you know, like when they get up age 21, 20, that's cool, you know what I'm saying. I feel like you'll be kind of more mature at that age, but right. 18, uh, you, you pushing it, you know. What See, I'm saying? I, hear, I hear that all the time from dudes who are in prison and shit like that who say that like the 18 ish age dudes are so different than like the 21, 22 year old For dudes. Sure. Even in just that short period of time, we kind of underrate as a society how much growing up you do yeah. around that time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even you got some young motherfuckers. That's, I mean, you got people that's 21 that still think young, but I feel like you will, it's it's better to try to get them a couple more years. You got to think about you give a motherfucker 18 in high school. Right. Able to get guns. Right. But then when we think about, okay, say hypothetically they made the, the age where you have to carry a gun 21. What what does that mean? That means you're going to have a whole shitload of 18 to 20-year-olds who end up thrown in fucking prison. 
and having to go do a See, couple years but, or whatever it but, is. But in Texas, like, gun cases are misdemeanors. Mm. And, and if you're not a felon, you right. get what I'm saying? So if you ain't got no... um. No, no case for like class A misdemeanor for domestic violence or like shit like that, and um, like a felon, you can carry a gun. You right. get what I'm saying? And it's nothing but a misdemeanor. Like it's just like a simple like little bush. I think you can catch up to like five to seven of the motherfuckers too. Damn. Before it turned to a felon, you know what I'm saying? So it's like unlawfully carrying a weapon, just a little misdemeanor short. And and realistically, it's you know. It's not that hard to carry a gun and not get caught. All right. you got to do is really like stay out of directly getting involved in right, shit. And right, it's like right, right. so. So having seven times that you can get caught and not have to do prison time is pretty right. fucking liberal, realistically. Like five, it's like five to seven in, in that what you call, but like, you know, it ain't it ain't like harsh like how it is in Cali or how it is in New York and shit. You know right. what I'm saying? So there were a lot of people like you can't have like drugs around and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course, yeah, so, but you know, I, I, I rather bit. I rather. It being a misdemeanor than uh, automatic elf, you know what I'm saying? Them just locking up motherfuckers left and right, you know what right. I'm saying? Because do you feel like a large percentage of the, you know, 18-year-old dudes that you grew up around or whatever, they feel like they have to carry something in order to just be safe? Yeah, I feel like they do. And then, like, you know, the, the areas that we grew up in, the shit that we see, you know, everything going on, like, if you on defense about it, I'm all for it, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I'm all for that, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's the young motherfuckers who just don't give a fuck sometimes you know they just buck with it and i know how that shit go because i was once one of them right you know what i'm saying but at the same time it's like shit y'all made this shit legal everybody can just run around this shit like that yeah definitely but all right so let, let's be real do you think that because people always want to ask me this question they always want to say D does drill music create more violence and I mean, being 38 years old, I just got to be like, yes, a fucking course. Because right. if you fucking kill somebody and you write a song about it, or if, if somebody gets killed and then you write a song, even if you had nothing to do with it, where you're making fun of the guy who died or whatever, clearly this is the kind of shit that's going to create more violence. I'm not saying I don't understand it, but realistically, like, and, and if music didn't exist, would it still be happening on people's Instagram stories and shit like that? Yeah, of course. But I mean, it seems kind of silly. Like, how, how do you view that being that you're a bit older now? Talking about just music in, in general? Or just people who say that, like, music I is... Feel, I feel like it do, but it's an art, too. Because, yeah. like, you know, I, I'm saying that to say just because a motherfucker rapping it don't mean they're actually living it. You right. know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit that go on in this music. That's what people want to hear mm. at the same time. But yes, I do feel like certain music make motherfuckers want to go do some shit. You know what I'm saying? That just, it is. Like, it just, that just what it is on that end. But at the same time, like, I, you know, you ain't you ain't supposed to let motherfuckers just easily influence you too right. at the same time. But then how can I say that when I was influenced by the shit I was influenced <laughs> by? So yeah. it's like a catch 22 on that shit. But do you ever have a moment where you're like, I don't know, your kid or, or you see somebody else's kid singing along to a bar of yours that is some gangster ass shit and you're just you kinda have a moment where you're like, ah shit. Yeah, but hey, I'm that's that's me telling my life mm. or and then like it's like yeah. It be fucked up. It be fucked up cause I got kids now and I see what the shit that they be listening to and you know, they just quoting what they hear. A lot of times they don't even really understand it though. Right. Because so, I feel like how old are you now? 30. 30. Yeah. Okay. I feel like when you came in the game, you were kind of more in the like young hot boy rapper part of your life. You right. know, like people were like looking at you like, oh, this is a new wild ass Texas right. guy right here. Right. Like, do you feel a bit more grown up just having seen so much more of the game I, and everything? I feel like I, I was still laid back like I am. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it's like I grew. Of course, I'm just grow as 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 you get older, you're gonna grow regardless. You know, that's part of the game. It, ho hopefully, you, you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers growing and not trying to be stuck in the same element or the same mind frame and shit. So but I feel like, you know, like I feel like I, I always kind of been laid back and kind of just approach the game how I approach it. Like my music different, like, you know what I'm saying? Like of course, I'm going to talk my shit and that shit, but, like, for the person, I, I always kind of been, like, laid back in the tech when I got mm. to type shit. You know what I'm saying? You you still, like, when you make music, like, with the singing and everything, is that kind of meant to, like, soften the rapping, or is it meant to make it have a little nah, bit more I just, of appeal? I, I like R&B, too. Right. You give us, I'm just a music head. Like, I'm a music connoisseur. Like, I like all types of music. That's why you'll fuck around and hear me on some shit that you'll be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Mm. You get what I'm saying? I just like it, I, and I feel like if I can do it, I'm going to do it. You think you're a gifted hook writer? Yeah. Right. I think I think that's that was that used to be one of the hardest shit to, to do. Like, I was in a group when I was young, right. and we used to always either come with 
up with hooks together or like my homie Snoop was like kind of the main person who came in with the hooks type shit. Mm -hmm. It was like kind of hard for me because we would always do like the group shit. So when Snoop went to jail, Kobe went to jail, goddamn, it was like I had kind of stopped fucking with the music for a little bit. But then I was like, man, I got to I gotta learn just how to do, do this shit by myself. And I, it was always hard. So as I got just like just started just getting into it, I, I, that was my main thing. Like just try to make the hook, like try to make that bitch as creative as you can. Right. And I always just focus on just trying to make the hooks. You know what I'm saying? It's some crazy shit though too because I mean, some people when they write hooks try to make it kind of complicated, but like your biggest hits have had some simple ass hooks. Like simple. that's on me, baby. Yeah, simple. You just said it in a cool ass little way. <laughs> and that became like the biggest fucking song. Yeah. And it's like, it's not like you even rhymed anything. You just f fucking nailed it on that one. I don't yeah. know how to explain it. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of, I, I think that that's one of my gifts for real. Like, right. I, I can I can write a song, cool. You ever end up writing stuff for other people? Yeah, I wrote a couple shit. Like R&B chicks or dudes? Yeah, but I just, I just ain't, I be trying to keep that shit for myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I done done it before, but I be trying to keep it for myself, really. Right, yeah. yeah. That's what I always say is that I didn't I didn't wrote like a couple up. songs they didn't hit my people for it and got goddamn wrote it. I'm like, man, this shit too hard. Like, let's tell them let me keep this shit type of shit. Like, I don't know. I'll be liking this shit. Well, that's how much confidence you have in yourself, right? Because, like if you really believe that you could make that song go off, then mm -hmm. you might miss it. But if you're somebody who like really doesn't believe in yourself, then yeah, fuck it. You can have it. Right, nah, nah. Yeah, I dig it. Definitely. Um yeah, I don't know. Like looking back on that time period, like when you came out, there was a lot of fucking energy coming out of Dallas around that time. Right. It felt like just a lot of new artists popping off left and right, and you and you were one of them. Like, do you still feel like Dallas has that energy, or you feel like it's maybe slowed down a little bit since then, or what's the nah, state of that? Dallas still got it. It just Dallas motherfuckers got to get out of Dallas. Like the motherfuckers get trapped up in. I'm buzzing in my city. Right. I don't feel like I gotta like go out of. It's not even a lot. Of, a lot of them don't have the ambition or hustle just to get and just move around. Mm. Like one one thing I made like my duty. I went to other people's city, fucked around with the DJs, tried to fuck around with the artists. Like I was trying to be in the mix everywhere. Right. Like I wasn't trying to stay in Dallas. A lot of them niggas just get real comfortable where they at. And just feel like everything just supposed to come to them. And right. then, like, a lot of people, like like I say, my city really ain't just got, like, a lot of motherfuckers just producing, like, how L.A. or Atlanta or New York and shit. So when they get that little clap, them motherfuckers automatically just, in their mind, they made it. So they just get too big-headed before they really is something. But it's interesting because, like, you'll have a lot of young dudes who realistically are from the streets. Right. And then they make music for that crowd, right. but they don't think beyond that at all. Whereas I feel like you're someone who's maybe from those same background, but you also had it in your head like I'm gonna I'm gonna make real songs that could go beyond that. You right. know, right. a lot of people get get into the get rap game and then they start dissing some people, and then everything just becomes street, and that's cool for your fans, but it might have a ceiling on it at a certain point, right? right. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to touch everybody. Like yeah. I ain't want to just be stuck in a box. I want to have relatable music. Music for the females, music for the clubs, shit, music for the struggle, you know what I'm saying? Like, just everything. I was for, I want older people better to jam my shit. Some songs is going to be for, like, the crowd 30 and up type shit. Mm. Like, I want all that, you know what I'm saying? You ever think about that, That what your music might be like at 45? No, I don't know. You think you, you, you see yourself making music at 45? Yeah, but I feel like at 45, I've probably been kind of, I'd be trying to venture into other shit, like acting and all that type of shit. Is that stuff you're working on now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, trying to yeah. do all this shit. Have you had any acting roles or is it just you're working on it? I'm working on it. I ain't, I ain't just, I, the only thing I can say just like acting wise, like one of the, uh, the little, uh, what's that shit called? Like the little black ink shit. Oh, okay. You're on that show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Um, okay, so we didn't see you for a while, and mm -hmm. it kind of felt like it might have had something to do with the fact that, and for the record, you just recently got these charges dropped or this allegation taken care of or whatever, right. but it was posted up in the blogs and everything that you were basically accused of some, some nasty shit with a girl. It seems like those those that's all been cleared up. Like, what, what impact did that have on your career, and what was that like finding out that this was being put out there into the world about you? I mean, it impacted in a way. I mean, like, I, I can't just, it, it impacted, like, you know, in the corporate world, like, motherfuckers be kind of want to back up and see what's going on, but motherfuckers that knew me already knew what was up. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So, 
niggas really didn't even just buy into the shit. If you really bought into that shit, you just wanted to uh, 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 to feed off the, the negativity because whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? Like, people Did you see anybody hop in and start talking shit in situations where people you thought that you were supposed to be on good terms with? Nah. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying? Nah. And then, like, I had a lot of support from people, even, like, not trying to be funny, it made more females jump into my inbox and, like, all some weird shit. Right. But, like, a lot of people hit me up behind closed doors telling me, like, shit that they done and, you know what I'm saying, the shit that they have been through when it came to that type shit and but nah, I mean, just like for like the corporate world, like it'll kind of make people just like, hey, man, we're trying to see what's going on. But versus just on some regular shit, nah. So was this a girl that you actually did hang out with one time who came up with a story? And then and, and why, why do you think she did so? I just I feel like money the rule about you. She, she, you think she saw you as a lick? Yeah, it got to be. Mm. Got to be. It ain't no it ain't no if and bust about it. Right. People trying. That's a that's a fucked up hustle right now. Yeah. And, and if you ain't got the right people around you or, or shit ain't lined up how it's supposed to be shit, you know, they'll try to run with this shit. Right. Does that make you really question what girls For you sure. allow into your space? For sure. Right. I don't even want to fuck around. Right. Nah, for sure. It make you just bag up and look at all that type shit like, what the fuck? Yeah. Because you, you spend your whole life thinking that girls are great and like you some of the best times in your life are spending time with women, et cetera, and then you have one do you dirty, and it kind of throws, like, a negative light on the whole practice of even meeting new chicks. It'll fuck your trust up. Yeah. It'll make you look at everything different. Like, but it's just crazy. It's just, it just crazy how they just, how, how they able to do shit like that, bro, and then... Mm. Okay, if you, I ain't gonna lie, you try to black, <laughs> you try to black buy me or some shit, you might as well go to the fullest, you can go to it. I'll right. let, let talk about, you, uh, if it's some, uh, if you don't do this, I'm gonna get some money, hey, baby, you might as well go and do that. I ain't giving that no paper. Right. Fuck you and everything you got going. Because that's what fucks up the game, is that a lot of celebrities would just be like, here's yeah, here's because, 10 grand because, to make the problem go yeah, away, right? they don't want that heat. Mm. I don't give a fuck about that. You ain't getting no money out of me. Right. Yeah, because, yeah. okay, it's fucked up how the media works because, like, I went on this one rap blog and I just typed Yellow Beezy and I'm looking at the articles in reverse chronological order. So it's like the most recent one is Yellow Beezy cleared in sexual assault accusations. You scroll down a little bit more and you see the titles and the and the way that they talk about it on the initial articles when this accusation came out. And it's like you, you would have thought the fucking verdict was in, the, yeah. the guilty verdict that had been sent in by the judge. And then you get back up to the top and you realize, like, you know, what they do is they call you out loudly and Wait, then— right. And then they whisper the apology afterwards, or they whisper the correction afterwards, where far less people hear it, yeah. and it just strikes me as kind of fundamentally unfair. It, that, that's 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 how they usually do the shit, you know. The the, the lies in the room is gonna spread faster than the truth. So, right. and then like you say, when the truth is put out there, it ain't just how the lies was. Uh, people are just uh, not as interested. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're really, really interested when this comes out, and then we're, eh, we don't really care by the time it, it, it's proven not to be true. Yeah, that's how it usually go. It's crazy. Is that, did you kind of like take a step back from putting music out because of that until it got nah, cleared up? See, nah, that ain't had shit to do with it. Okay. Like, I was, I was in between switching labels at that time, so mm. that's why I hadn't been, first, the, when the pandemic came, I was trying to, I was getting out of a situation, but you know how to, like, all the offices had closed, so that shit took a long time, and then when she got back running, that shit still taking a long time with the paperwork and the process, so what, but for, the, like, the last year or two, I hadn't been putting out music, because, like I say, the pandemic, and then when, when the offices and shit got back open, and I'm, and I'm finna get into another situation, it take a long time, so right. after that shit got going on, okay, boom, we got that shit fixed, now we finna put out some music, then when I finna put out some music, that's when that bullshit hit, right. so it's like, damn, let me just, you know what I'm saying, have to recoup and do all that other shit, so that's why it was just even just prolonging, but mm. that had nothing to do with the initial prolonging of it, I was just in another situation, jumping out another situation. What was going on with your other label situation? that you wanted to change it up? Uh, it was just, you know, it was just time for me to just move around on certain shit. Like, I, I fuck with everybody over there. It wasn't on no bad terms shit. It would just feel like certain shit, like, you know what I'm saying, they didn't get, I felt like, and it was just like some hindering shit, I felt, on, on a certain tip. So I was like, man, I just got to move around. But I talked to all of them all the time, you know right. what I'm saying, still in cahoots with everybody. It ain't like none of that, like, we fell out of it. was like some type of, ooh. nah, it ain't nothing like that. So you sign, who are you signing now? Uh, asylum. Okay. Yeah. And that's going well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because like we were saying, it's like, you know, there's straight street rappers, and then when you look at the type of mu music you make, it's like, 
I think it needs a boost sometimes because it's like it's it's catchy. It's the type of shit that maybe if it, if more people hear it, right. then it's gonna be more likely to go viral. Right. Do you feel like you you ideally want to have a team that's like helping you push your shit out more? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like like and that's that's like that was like a part problem at the last level. You know what I'm saying? It was just, but it wasn't on them. I I I felt like I felt like if L.A. Nam could do what I need them to do, they would have done it. Mm. The higher ups wouldn't let them do that, if that makes sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Yeah. It, it wasn't, it was It was just really out of his hand. Like, we couldn't get the proper playlist and all this other extra shit. It was just like a whole bunch of bullshit that I just, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't him, though. Right. Like, if he could, he will do it. How How has your music changed? over the past couple of years in terms of like what you're drawn to because i seen i was looking at the track list i see i swear bezo i'm like oh shit is this about to be a a flint michigan style mixtape and then it wasn't really he just nah. yeah feature like but do you feel like you've been influenced by anything or change your shit up at all uh no nah, i mean I, you just gotta kind of listen to what's going on and just really just stick to your truthness and you know kind of kind of pay into it a little bit, but stick to your, your sound. And I kind of like, you know, I, I always talked about the struggle. I always was uh, melodic and shit like that, so I'm still on that same shit. But I know some shit, you got to step outside the box. You got to get, like, a lot of producers and, like, put a lot of different sounds in within, mix it in with your sound. So right. I feel like I grew on that level just for, like, messing with a lot of producers because at first I wasn't messing with a lot of producers. Right. Yeah. But in terms of, you only have two features on the project. Mm -hmm. In terms of why you put Vezo on there, what what was it about him that you wanted him to be one of the main features? Oh, I, I, honestly, bro, that that project was just to warm the streets back up because I hadn't dropped in so long. Okay. So like, I would just like, you know, I reach out to people who I like. Okay, that bro, hard. I like, I want to fuck with him. So I reached out to him. Hey, you do it very well, and then we got it done. You know what I'm saying? So right. I ain't want to just flood it with with features because I ain't want motherfucker be like, oh, he. Coming back on features or nah, I just you know what I'm saying. I right. I want to just show them like ain't nothing changed. I I just I hadn't put out music in a long time. Well, sometimes we think that Texas rappers only listen to Texas rappers. Nah, hell nah. Not at all. Hell nah. We Texas rappers listen to a lot of Louisiana and motherfucking Cali artists. Right. Really, For California sure. too. Yeah. Interesting. For sure. We always think that nobody outside of LA listens to LA rap. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Think about it. Dallas really is a consumer. Like Dallas really listen to every fucking city. Like if you hard, they will fuck with you. Right. They don't give a damn. Like them niggas listening to everybody that you can name. Right. Everybody. Definitely. Um. Okay. In terms of uh, in terms of like things going on in your life, you've been clean in terms of all the legal situations because i know you had some like back and forth uh, back in the day and everything but have yeah. you been on smooth sailing in that regard oh yeah hell yeah all, them, all my cases got dismissed really yeah all of them so you can move around freely yeah hell yeah that's got to feel good yeah love it definitely you have touring plans lined up or how, how do you yeah. think about your live performances uh what you mean what i think about like do you do, do you like to go on tour for a long time or you just do like little one-off wait nah, dates like, go do weekends no nah, i like that tour shit that tour shit fun like the biggest tour i had been on was right before the pandemic was with chris brown when he had the indigo tour shit. right i seen that but like you know what i'm saying it's like like we mostly like my career was basically on i had dealing with like two three tours really because that's when i was trying to get into the hard sale but you know like mostly coming from where i'm from we kind of was mostly like on like uh being used like right. just like like hostings and not hosting but like club uh shows type right. shit you know what i'm saying but um i i like touring too you feel like the 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 law in your city is is on your side at this point or do you feel like you're still considered you know a potential threat when they think about you man I, that's rap period right but i feel like you're gonna get that in any city you go in if you're a rapper you're just gonna be talking to bro right but i feel like you know with I, bullshit that go on in my city of course or um, in the state you know they'll look it, it just depend on the officer and just depend on what they are you know what i'm saying but i just feel like just being a rapper here you're gonna be targeted yeah, it's kind of crazy, though, because it's like by the time dudes get to be 45 or 50 or whatever, like one day all of a sudden you're Trey the Truth and you're like a community activist and you're helping out in your but community I, and I've shit and the cops start though. to fuck with you. Oh, really? Okay. I've been doing that. I've been doing that before I blew up in music. Right. You can go back to 2012, 2013, bro, us giving back to our community, like Christmas and back to school. I've right. been doing that since 2012, 2013. Right. I've been doing that before that, like. 
Like for like t- like talking and going to go holler at the kids at the school, doing all that shit. I still do that to this day. Right. That part is what don't get shined up on. They want to pump like all the bullshit a nigga do like uh, go through and shit. But what about all the positive? Right. No. Niggas spend a lot, like a lot of money on kids like for 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 Christmas and back to school like and. It ain't just gotta be that. If I see a little little dude on the street or a, a, a little girl that that's like need a coat, need shoes, or just need some money, I look at we do that shit like unscripted. That's just something that we do automatically. That's right. in me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So that shit just don't get shined up on like the bullshit. No, yeah, hundred percent. But uh, there there was also <laughs> there was this thing that happened where you got arrested for having hand sanitizer that was in a fake lean bottle. <laughs> Can we talk about nah, how did this occur? Nah, see. Okay, in the pandemic, you know, everybody was trying to get their hustle on. They trying to hustle from the house, all that shit going on, right? Right. So this, it was a chick who was in the video. She brought a prop to the video. And her shit was like on some put the drink down shit or whatever case, okay? some shit like that. But, people always want to sell some lean shit, but right, don't do lean. <laughs> right, some shit like that. But, like, you know, people just getting creative with their packaging. Right, with, yeah, with yeah. Like, with just whatever they selling. Like, like I told people, it was... People that were sitting like, uh, what's this shit called? Girl eyelashes, like in pill jars, though. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I guess I'm, she might was inspired by that. So she put like hand sanitizer in the lean bottle. Right. But it say promethazine with hand sanitizer. Right. I just feel like she had the word and fucked up. But when I told him like it's hand sanitizer, nigga just thought it was like some bullshit. And I was like, bro, you, lean is not this goddamn thick. And jelly, you can like, right. like it's not sticky. Like, put it on your hand. Like, they weren't trying to hear that bullshit. The cops didn't give a fuck. No, that, they, which they is, just wanted a risk. It's crazy because I feel like every time I've been in Texas, that people just be outside with lean bottles like it's fucking nothing. I couldn't even believe that anybody was getting in trouble for it. Nah, they you, they they own yeah. Really? They own yeah. I think they I think in Houston they can't even uh, have like a styrofoam cup. They was writing tickets for this shit. Really? Yeah, if you had like a double uh, double cut styrofoam cup. Oh, see, they, see, that's really kind of like big <laughs> on the outer states. Like niggas in Texas really ain't double cupping. Like they 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 double cup, but not just really like styrofoam like that no more. They drinking in Yeti cups and and all just different type of shit like that double cup styrofoam shit. Like they right. kind of you know. Kinda... I'm gonna be honest with you. You could stand on Melrose in L. A., which is one of the most popular streets with a double cup, drinking lean. You could have a lean bottle. You could be pouring up lean on the street. At, for, you could do this all day, and the cops aren't gonna say. Shit. For real? Yeah, it's like fucking anarchy out here. Yeah. <laughs> in comparison, I feel like honestly. Yeah. But I mean, I Bullshit. see people walking around with a pound of lean on their fucking or a pound of weed on their shoulder as well. And yeah. it's just no, this LA, Cali, so shit. This this shit legal out here. You, I don't know. They need to do that shit in Texas too. I mean, yeah, and like even I was just back in New York, and like in New York, we used to like if we were drinking in public, we would be hella low key, keeping in the brown bag, whatever. We were like really scared of getting tickets for drinking in public. Now you can smoke weed and drink in yeah. public in New York, and, and nobody says shit. shit. And they deliver that shit to you. Yeah, they got the lit like like how they got Uber Eats. They got you. Can, you can really order up some weed in New York, and they come deliver that shit right. to you. So when I lived there twelve years ago, you couldn't smoke a blunt out in public, and you had to hide it if you're going to be smoking weed. I mean, you could smoke a blunt in public, but you'd have to be like, really be looking around. They had a lot of undercover cops and shit like that. Right, and it's like. Now, when I, but now I look at it as kind of like an adult, which is like, do you want like when you go to the park with your kid having a nice little afternoon? Right. Do you want there to be like fucking twenty dudes sitting around smoking bongs and drinking Budweisers and shit? I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a hard call to make. Man, they ain't got to be doing all that <laughs> shit. You know, you can smoke shit. If motherfucker gonna smoke, they gonna smoke. But bongs and all that extra shit, just keep that for the half. Yeah, that's yeah. real. Uh, how many kids you got? Three. Three. Yeah. How's that going? Good. Yeah. Yeah. You got to spend a lot more time with them during the pandemic. Like a motherfucker. One was made in the pandemic. Oh, okay. Here you go. Wait, how old's the oldest one? Uh, eleven. That's my stepson. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, my 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 junior, he finna be five, and then the other one, he'll be two. Right. Yeah. And so, how's that uh changed your life? As you, as you saw earlier, I got a, a two year old, mm-hmm. and it's it's fucking great. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it bring another kind of spark in you. Mm. So I, I love that, that parenting shit, especially when they get excited when they see you or they call you and shit. So then they acting just like me. So that shit just, that's what's up with me. You think it made you a little bit more focused on your business and whatnot? Look, I, I always been like that. But of course, like with kids, it's going to make you kind of tighten up with everything because, you know, you got somebody really depending on you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Other than, you know, this somebody you made. So you going to goddamn try to tighten up as much as you can. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. No, definitely. 
Um, okay. So there was this other uh, story that came out at one point. Basically, a picture of your penis allegedly leaked <laughs> on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> what what happened? How did this happen? Give me the story. Um, man, I don't even know how to. Uh, what the fuck happened? I think uh, it was my 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 girl accidentally posted the shell. Really? Yeah. She's just out of control on Instagram. She's no, accidentally she throwing it on there. No, she accidentally like you know how you know how like fuck it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to like we was okay. Look, she had recorded this shit from out the camera, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So. We was in the um we was in the room before she was finna go deliver my youngest, you know what I'm saying? She we was in the room just chilling and I was like, hey, y'all come I I recorded like on my phone, like, hey, y'all come get my uh bow head jigaboo at Bay Mama from in front of me. <laughs> so she was like, You better not put it up there because her hair wasn't done. So she was like, All right, well, you wanna play me? I'll put I'll post woo And she at, she went to the stores and she was like basically like saying if I if I upload that video, she was gonna upload them, but she was just bullshitting. Right. So I tried to reach for the phone, like we playing this shit, and I grabbed for it. She dropped it, and when it dropped, I guess I don't know if I us I touched or the flow made it upload. Wow. And then it wasn't thing about it, it wasn't even like fully uploading. Like we tried to restart the phone and everything, it still uploaded. Right. And it was up for like two minutes, and then. It was like three o'clock in the morning, like on a Saturday. So we like, man, ain't nobody. Up. Everybody out, probably partying. Ain't nobody gonna kiss that shit. Uh huh. They caught this. Turns shit. out you're famous, and that if you if you upload something to Twitter and delete it like two seconds later, it still is gonna show up for a lot of people who are looking at Twitter right that moment. So what the hell are you doing porn for? Uh, money mostly. <laughs> Fucking new girls is cool too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but when you do hey, what I've done, hey, you don't look, have to worry about a look, picture leaking. Look, 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 look. When I go on Pornhub, bro, I don't expect to see you, fam. You saw me? Damn it. Man, that's why I'm telling you, ass. I don't expect to see you. I said, what the fuck? I thought it was like some shit that got leaked. I said, this nigga is <laughs> this nigga and this bitch doing porn. Like, come on, I ain't trying to see Just don't click that. it. This nigga here is crazy. So you Damn. really doing porn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, we, we have a podcast called Plug Talk available at onlyplugtalk.com. We interview girls and then we fuck them together, me and my girl. So that's when you met my girl earlier. That's what you were thinking. It's like, damn, that's the girl he does porn with. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't even know that was her. I swear yeah. to God. That's the crazy part. That's, that's, I mean, you shit, you living life. Yeah, I can't complain. You living life. It's a good gig if you can get it. Yeah. Damn, yeah. you lucky. You lucky. You couldn't see yourself doing the same thing? Nah. Well, you're already out there. Accident though, <laughs> accident. But goddamn, you got a girl. Or you still single? No, nah, I got a girl. Okay. Yeah. And you don't think she wants to get in the business? Hell nah. <laughs> she ain't getting no motherfucking business. She better keep selling them motherfucking bundles. <laughs> shit. Oh man. Oh, Hell she sells nah. hair. Yeah. Interesting. She's a millionaire of hair. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You like that? That entrepreneur on entrepreneur relationship. You think that's more likely to work out than like? A dude who's doing his thing, traveling, doing all the shit, and then a girl is just kind of chilling at the crib. I ain't gonna lie, I don't, I don't, I don't. You gotta have some going. Mm. You got to have some going. You gotta have your own motion. Right. So, but she had her own motion before me, so mm. that was cool. So that's just that's just uh, that's we 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 extra. You know what I'm saying? That right. shit's some good embracement. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to feel. I don't. Me personally, I can't just you know what I'm saying just take care of a woman who ain't got nothing going on. Right. I feel like if you're in that kind of relationship where you're making millions of dollars and they are literally not doing anything, you're just asking for the relationship to be like not in balance. Exactly. You're going to have all the power. You're going to be able to call all the shots. And then if she like tries to fucking navigate the boat, it's kind of like, wh- like, what are you bringing to this scenario? Like that's going to have to become a question at a certain point, right? I just, I just don't feel like you should be dependent on a man and a man shouldn't just be dependent on a woman. Mm. You got to have your own motion. You ain't got to be the rich. You just have something going on. Right. Something you're passionate about. Even if you ain't making as much money as exactly. me. Exactly. Just the fact that you're working on it in general is attractive. You got to have something going on. There's it's no reason why a adult shouldn't have nothing going on. All, that's, all that 1960 ass shit talking about housewives and sitting at the house. Hey, man, to each his own. But, right. bro, with me, I ain't. I ain't. I can't. Right. I but just, I personally can't. If you reached a certain level of success, would there be part of you that was basically kind of like, babe, just stay home, pump out kids? See, with her, with her it, it would be that because I know this is where she came from. Right. Like, I mean, she came with her own shit, so wouldn't have no problem. But 
I wouldn't like if I was to go if we would say we wouldn't make it and I'm trying to go look for another girl. You still gonna have to have something going because now my trust issue fucked up because I know what I bring to the table. I know mm. what I got going on. You can be trying to sell me any type of way you want to and play their role just because you know I'm gonna look out for you. I take care of you. Some go on, baby. You're gonna be on the next dick. Right, but there's certain rappers, whether it's Dirk or Moneybag Yo, etc., who are are a lot less shy about showing their relationship no, you, than we used to be. We used to never see rappers put it out there yeah, like that. Now no. you got a lot of rappers who are lit, yeah. and they're letting you see into their life a bit more. It's, it's, it's interesting. Nothing with, it's nothing wrong with that. Like Sparla, especially she bring like do all that. Right. It's it's nothing wrong with that at all. Especially that's your girl. It's nothing wrong with that at all. Right. I you know I'm just saying like anybody else now, nah, but now nah, yeah, do your thing for your girl for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I did want to ask this is uh, you barely acknowledged it. You barely ever had anything to say about it, but there was a lot of tension, at least on records or people talking online between you and Mo3. Now that he's passed, how do you view all that? Like, do you, do you, are you able to admit that he was, you know, an important factor in the city for that period of time, or is it still just, I don't, I, you can't say anything? No, I don't, I ain't never had no tension with nobody. Right. That was it. Right. Yeah, ain't never been no tension with nobody. Look at this guy. I, just, I saw you give Vlad an answer like that at one point, too. I'm I'm serious. <laughs> it, I don't have a problem with people. Right. I don't even, he ain't had no problem with me. Dallas creates a lot of gangsters because I, I was actually looking back at my old interview with him and I said basically the same thing to him. Basically, didn't say shit. So, yeah, ain't, respect. Ain't, no, ain't never been no. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Um, okay. Another person I wanted to ask you about from Texas, I wanted to get your thoughts on him. How you feel about the rise of Charleston White? Man, that <laughs> nigga, bro, do he doing him? He doing him, man. You know, I just he doing him, right? Yeah. Do you know what's crazy is that? So they got all these weird little documentaries online and shit. And I was watching one that was basically about you and some other rappers and all the different tension, different people getting into situations in the streets or whatever. And they got like a community activist talking about this. And this is mad long ago before anyone was talking about Charleston White. And mm -hmm. he, he's in this fucking video talking to the news camera, complaining about rappers in the city. For real? Yeah. And this is before we knew about him. He was he was already doing this. Right. He probably is. I, I believe he do the community ask shit. Like, I, I be, I see him, like, I know he really be into that type shit. You know, he gonna talk his shit, you know, that's just what he gonna do, shit. Right. Hey, man, that's, you know. But how, how do you feel about when you hear him wishing that all the gangster rappers would die and saying I mean, you know, all this crazy it's, shit? It's a lot of shit that I don't agree with, you know what I'm saying? But who right. am I just to, you know, I, I, it's a lot of shit I don't agree with, with motherfuckers saying, but, you know, he, he, he a funny nigga, though, but that shit don't be funny to me, you right. know what I'm saying? But, that just, you know, he, you know, he just him. It's kind of crazy because seeing something like his shit become so popular makes me realize that there are a lot of people in who pay attention to rap, but kind of secretly low key wish all the rappers would go to jail. I only, I really don't even feel like he feel like that. Really? He just talking shit to to get his paper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though he didn't say shit by me, and I, you know, I'll be like, man, this nigga here is on some bullshit, but. I really, you know, I just feel like bro be talking. He probably mean a lot of shit that he do say, though. Like, right. he probably mean a lot of fucked up shit. Like, I don't know. It's just like, it's one of them situations. Like, this nigga just crazy, bro. Uh, that nigga look, crazy. One of the cr most viral things I've seen in him was just a clip where he's got his arms in the air with no shirt on, and he's, like, praying that all of the gang members in Chicago will die. Hell, man. And nigga. it's just like, bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> That man crazy, bro. That nigga just crazy, bro. Yeah. He crazy. He's a guy. Yeah. Um, What's the state of the shag? Nigga still running it. Yeah? Yeah. Is it still as popping as it used to be? For a while, I, I felt like everybody had man, one. It's always going to be that in Dallas. Okay. It's always going to be that. In Dallas, Fort Worth, it's always going to be, you're going to see old niggas, young niggas, shags, babies with shags. Right. It's For just, people who don't know, it's basically kind of like letting the bottom part of your hair grow out so it's mm -hmm. like the rest of your hair is kind of normal and then right. you got like a little tiny percentage of an afro in the back yeah 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 a mullet or whatever you want to call it i just seen drake with something that kind of looked like a shag shout out to drizzle <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure it was a technical shag but it was something like that drake, drake kind of like slicked his shit back yeah, yeah 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 
And, and it looked like a puff at that motherfucker. Man, he's too successful. He got too much time on his hand. He's just thinking up new hairstyles. Yeah, fuck it. He might have a whole team just putting together like what hairstyles he's because he's he's gonna break that hairstyle. It's gonna become a whole thing. Man, that nigga do what he want to, man. That's drizzy, man. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, so okay, you've worked with Young Thug in the past. How'd you feel when you saw this uh Rico come down? Hurt my motherfucking feelings. Yeah. Hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah, yeah, that nigga a solid nigga. That nigga one of the most solid niggas in this music shit. Right. For sure. Like, one of the niggas who showed me some love, and that nigga a solid nigga, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. 100%. Do you think that that's gonna make more rappers be more cautious about what they're putting in their lyrics? And One day, don't need, like I say, it's, that is an art. Mm. That is an art. So, how you gonna, like, I can literally, you can tell me something that you did yesterday with you and your girl he can tell me something that he did with him and his girl, him and his homeboys and, uh, yesterday. Right. Just like right now. I can freestyle and make it seem like some shit. I was there. I can make it seem like we did some extra shit going on with this shit. Make it real believable mm. and put it out there and the shit going to sound hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the art. You get what I'm saying? Like you can't motherfucking tell me. Every rapper that said they killed somebody, they killed somebody. Right. You can't tell me every rapper that said they from the hood or sold drugs is from the hood or sold drugs. Right. Before I even knew what a Lamborghini or probably could spell a Lamborghini, I was in a Lamborghini at 16, 15 in my raps. Right. Pulling up with Maybachs and mansions and shit. Right. It's an art, bro. The thing with they the, don't even need to be using that in the court system. But a lot of us said this when the, the YSL case came out. But then, as time goes by, you start to realize, like, oh, they have a fuckload of other evidence, and all these lyrics that, and shit are actually pretty they, much irrelevant in no, the case. No, that's what I'm saying. That's an art. What they doing? That's what journalists do. That's right. an art. They'll put. They'll try to act like this situation was he. He was talking about this situation in this rap when they ain't got nothing to do with it. Right. But me as a kid, the case but, like like. That's what the court do. When I was listening to G Unit and Fifty Cent was saying, "I'll kill you," I ain't playing. Yeah. But it was never, "I shot this guy last week." And now, a lot of times with like some of the rap stuff is like it's I, it's so specific that it feels very different I sometimes. Get it, but that's a new part of the art. Like right. I'm trying to make you feel like I'm really doing it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But you're somebody who I've noticed that as much as I listen to you and as much as we heard little things about Yellow Beezy being in the streets that you never really gave any of, the way, of it away in songs. I, I don't give a fuck to. Right. Like, to me, like, certain shit just don't need to be said. Some people, that's a different way, like, of them expressing themselves. That don't mean they actually doing it, though. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like I say, that's what the courtroom gonna do. They gonna try to make you out of a monster, try to act like you really doing this, you doing this situation. This is what song he was talking about. Nigga, that song probably was done fucking 10 years ago. Mm. And I'm just now putting it out. I got songs right now, if I put it out, I promise you gonna feel like it's relevant to some situation. Right. If I'm talking about anything in my song, yeah, I didn't kill a nigga and laid across the street, woo, woo, who they who you think they gonna say think I'm talking about? Right. They're gonna just try to put two and two together. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's what they do. And it be all type of bullshit. Like the course being that motherfucker, like they been there trying to put some bullshit together, bro, and it don't even make sense. I'd be like, bro, do y'all really believe this shit? Mm. And people really be, be believing this shit. Right. But they really be just trying to put all this bullshit together and when it and it ain't even that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel it. Then you'll have you'll have a lot of motherfuckers who ain't even in YSL claiming YSL because they cause they know some of these niggas in it and then they'll go crash out and do some dumb ass shit and now looking like, oh shit, he the one who sent him to do the shit. He right. ain't had nothing to do with that. You get what I'm saying? Right. It's a lot of niggas be trying to claim that's why I mean, hey man, you ain't my people don't have that on your motherfucking profile. If I you know what I'm saying? Like you can't claim my shit. Like I this ain't none of that type of bullshit going on. Cause that's mm. how little bullshit trip up a lot of shit. But when you see, like, multiple people allegedly snitching on that case right away, does that make you feel like, damn, the streets ain't, they ain't what they used to be? Yeah, it ain't not even that shit. That don't even mean, they probably got him mixed up in this bullshit, whoever them dudes is, you get what I'm saying? He probably done, done some other type of dirt that he just trying to get out, he probably know it's easy just because they trying to get him. Right. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm. They gonna blame him because he's the huncho. He's the head of the YSL over there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They gonna try to put any and everything on him. Just from the smallest shit, cause they want something to stick. Right. They, they ain't, niggas gonna snitch anyway. A lot of these niggas ain't really solid. So. You seen it time and time again? 
What, snitching? Yeah. For sure. Mm. You nigga gonna do that. <laughs> you nigga gonna do that. These Listen. niggas, these niggas are volunteer. Like you ain't got a goddamn even have nothing on nothing. Right. They'll go and tell it. If you if you tell in Dallas, are you going back to your neighborhood if everybody knows about it, or is it, is it so serious that ain't, they ain't gonna let you come around? Ain't nothing for me to tell on. We ain't doing no telling. Not nothing. you. I'm saying if someone else tells. If someone else tells. If, if what? somebody tells, you know, real real deal, everybody knows they're a snitch. You think that on average in 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 Dallas that people are gonna let them come back? Yeah. yeah, I hear I hear that about LA man, too. Some of these <laughs> niggas ain't really gonna step on them folk. Them man, some of these, these a lot of these niggas be out here saying, "Oh, he ain't telling on me." Right. I ain't got nothing to do with it. He ain't telling on me. I man, and then they don't, ain't a lot of these niggas ain't trying to fuck with niggas they, that's known for snitching because they feel like they gonna snitch. He gonna snitch on them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that don't mean like somebody ain't gonna get his ass. Right. But he can probably come back. For a short period of time, but some people ain't gonna fuck with him, depending on what who the people is. It just depends on who he snitched on. If they really like that, then his people probably gonna take care of him. But if, if you snitch on some niggas who ain't like that, then shit, you <laughs> they probably can walk around that motherfucker. <laughs> These niggas ain't just stumbling on that shit like that. Right. They yeah. will, but they is, but then a lot of times, like I say, these niggas, man, he ain't got nothing to do with me. He ain't snitch on me. Right. Exactly what they gonna say. Cause I think at the end of the day, people people just don't wanna be mean to other people. Like p- people are very adverse to being cruel or like dismissing someone so i feel like that's why a lot of times that shit just kind of gets smoothed over because people don't want to be nah, beefing with other people a lot of these niggas ain't living like that anyway mm. so some people just don't give a fuck about that and some niggas be scared so they just don't fuck with it you know what i'm saying if you know a nigga t- telling saying that he gonna tell it on you nigga, why even go that route with them right it just it just i don't know that's why nobody's gonna do anything in charleston because they know he's just gonna report it back to the authorities Charles will probably, <laughs> Charles will probably gonna pop a nigga, especially if he in Texas too. He tell he gonna pop your ass. I too. mean, he was in Miami with the mace. Yeah, he gonna mace your ass down. You respect that? What? Somebody macing somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really in your language of uh, how you get down, but ain't no rules in fighting. Yeah, ain't no rules in fighting. That's the truth. Um, all right, so I'm fucking with the album, uh, Badass Yellow Boy. Why? Why do you go with that title? I always wanted that title for some reason. Like, if you go back to UNLV, um, nigga named uh, Yellow Boy, he, you know that song? He had uh, Dismissal. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that song like a big-ass song in, um, in Texas, like in Louisiana, all that shit, like back in the day. And like me growing up, is either I'm going, like before I even was Yellow Beezing as a kid, they either gonna call me red because of my skin tone, or they gonna call me yellow, uh-huh. or yellow boy. Like yellow boy, come over here. It's just something that that was out, just automatically, just giving me just all my skin complexion type right. shit. So me knowing like my name, that song, I love that beat type shit. Juvin done done that beat. Like, it just all makes sense, you know what I'm saying? I gotta redo this badass yellow boy. My name yellow bees, so I gotta redo this motherfucker. So I redid it. We were gonna post. We were supposed to drop an album first. They're like, man, let's go on the streets up with a mixtape first. Right. It's like, cool. Shit, badass yellow boy. The title. See, when I saw it though, my brain got to thinking. I'm like, well, he spelled ass with a z z, and some people have wondered online, when's the last time the yellow bees talked to Boosie Badass? <laughs> what? You guys haven't communicated in a long time. I'm assuming. I don't know. Okay, yeah. but it's it's not a reference to Boosie Badass in any way. Hell no. Nah. Okay. Hell nah, they ain't got shit. What Boosie got to do with anything? I don't know. Would you consider yourself on good terms with him? Who, Boosie? Yeah. We straight? Okay. They ain't got nothing. To we supposed to be in two or something? I don't know. I see I see people wondering on YouTube. Nah. People <laughs> digging. <laughs> they digging. They trying to digging create like some animosity? Mother. Digging like a motherfucker. Okay. Shout out to Boosie. Shout out to Boosie. Yeah. Um. Okay. So anything else that we should know about besides this new tape that they should go check out? Um. Dropping... Uh, none but mo mo motherfucking hits. Badass yellow boys out. Shit, one of the leading singles. Don't fuck with me. Going crazy. Gonna drop some more shit going on. Just you gotta just tune in. Yeah. Yeah. Tune in. Yeah. Yellow Beezy. For sure. My man, I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Yellow Beezy. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. No jumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, man. You did.